humans, I'm Yo Schiller. Today, I intend to discuss my plans regarding my YouTube channel and video production schedule as I move forward into the year of 2024. This video will also serve as a self-reflection of my channel and myself as I analyze my performance and mindset for 2023, as well as the past several years. 2023 was a remarkably busy year for me, and I have quite a bit of information that I plan to discuss today. As such, I believe that the best way to divide all of today's information would be to break this video down into multiple sections, those being the past, the present, and the future. I normally do these yearly recap videos as an annual tradition, and I'm supposed to do them in January, not February, but as you can imagine, I've been busy. But in 2023, I didn't make one at all. That was a bit of a regret on my end. I had full intentions of creating a video, but right from the get-go, 2023 was a roller coaster of a year. As for the year prior, 2022, it was filled with highs and lows as well. And so, my canceled 2023 plans video would have essentially explained that I just wanted to better myself from 2022 and become more consistent and ambitious with my uploads. So so, did I succeed on that front? Well, I was certainly more ambitious, but I don't know that I was necessarily more consistent. So I guess I didn't necessarily succeed in my goals, but there were a couple of improvements that I made over the course of the year. I spent a fair share of 2022 wrapping up my new Pokemon Snap walkthrough, but I also recorded a variety of other gameplay videos as well. And the general upload schedule for my channel has been walkthrough videos on weekdays and online multiplayer videos on weekends. This is a video schedule that I've been trying to pursue ever since 2014, and whenever I have more time to actually work on videos, Videos, this is supposed to be the ideal schedule for my channel always. Daily videos, walkthroughs on weekdays, online multiplayer content on weekends, and on Wednesdays I would upload whatever Wednesday videos, which provides me an opportunity to experiment with different styles and attempt to expand the variety on my channel. Now obviously ever since 2014 I haven't been able to post a video every single day, but I've had multiple weeks and sometimes even multiple months where I was able to achieve this upload regimen. And in 2022, I'd say I was fairly successful on this endeavor. For the start of the year, I was regularly posting videos in all categories, and things appeared to be in a pretty healthy state. I was posting walkthrough videos of Kirby and the Forgotten Land, I was uploading plenty of content for Mario Kart and Pokemon for the weekends, and I was creating whatever Wednesday videos at an active pace. Sure, there'd be days where my upload schedule was a bit wonky, but for the most part, I was fairly consistent throughout the year. And through all of this, I was also actively editing for a couple of other channels. There were days where I was editing for multiple clients all at the same time, and somehow I managed to just do it all. In fact, I think that staying so consistently busy may have benefited my production too. I think I just work better under pressure. It also helped that many of the videos that I made were simple gameplay videos, so nothing was really all that time consuming or intensive. Though, there were actually some exceptions to that too. Going into the year, I actually had a goal that I wanted to make more editorial type content. I was able to piece together a few videos of this style toward the start of the year, but ultimately I was just too busy with everything else to be able to make these types of videos as a part of my upload routine. So I developed an urge to create more editorial type content, and fortunately that urge was fulfilled by editing for other channels and clients, but I still wish that I could have made more like this for my channel. There were definitely plenty of topics that I wish I could have discussed on my channel, and there were several ideas that could have been fun to edit and watch, but I was more committed to a daily upload schedule instead. So creating videos where I discussed a specific bit of news in the gaming industry, or uploading a video where I discussed my opinion on a game series, or writing a video in which I shared my experience of an event long ago, that just didn't fit with the format of content that I was posting at the time, nor did it align with my upload schedule. There are definitely plenty of topics that I could have discussed and several ideas that could have been fun to edit and watch, but I was more committed to a daily upload schedule instead. I'll touch more on this point a little later in this video, but for now, let's fast forward to the end of 2022. At this point, Splatoon 3 had released, and so I launched the next iteration of my Splatoon Ink It Up series. And shortly after that, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were released, and I opted to record a blind walkthrough for the new Pokemon generation. And in addition to that, I was still wrapping up my new Pokemon Snap walkthrough. That walkthrough was pretty on and off, and completing that game was a much bigger undertaking than I had originally anticipated. Still, I was able to complete new Pokemon Snap before the year ended, and I powered through Pokemon Scarlet in order to get on that new game rush. And so, with 2022 coming to a close, I was poised to continue into 2023 in a pretty straightforward fashion. I had walkthrough videos I could make, I knew what new games I would want to play, and my upload schedule was still going to be set in place. Plus, in 2022, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe had received DLC, and that was supposed to receive more updates throughout 2023 as well. So, between Mario Kart DLC, Splatoon 3, and a new generation of Pokemon, I was certainly set on content creation for the upcoming year. But I still wanted to be ambitious too. I still had a craving to do more than just simple games gameplay videos and a daily upload schedule. So I had an idea. One of my more ambitious projects back in 2022 was to finally 
finally complete some of the games from my childhood that I never completed. I thought that it'd be fun to upload what was essentially a long play of myself resuming my childhood cartridges of a game and just complete things from where I left off. Additionally, I was also gaining interest in recording and capturing footage of games that had features, modes, or unlockables that were not well documented and or were difficult to obtain. As such, I started with Pokemon Stadium. At the time, the game was not re-released. Namely, it was not yet re-released onto Nintendo Switch Online. So, I took up the opportunity to record a difficult to access but well-known game that contained rarely documented features in an effort to upload a new type of content style to my channel. It wound up being a more tedious and time-consuming task than I had anticipated, but ultimately it was a fun video. Or rather, pair of videos. Between the two videos, the total runtime was over 13 hours, and yet I enjoyed making the videos, and viewers seemed to enjoy watching them. So after the success of those videos, I had a spark ignite inside of me. I was determined to create more videos in this same format. Unfortunately, these videos are very time-consuming to record, edit, and upload. After all, like I just said, the Pokemon Stadium videos totaled out to be 13 hours long, and that's after they've been trimmed and edited down. The raw gameplay was well over 70 hours, and storing all of the files basically ate up about one terabyte of hard drive space. As a result, between 2022 and 2023, I only created two other videos in this same format, Sonic Adventure 2 and Mario Tennis on the Game Boy. And again, I chose these games because they were childhood games of mine that I never completed, but also they both featured modes that weren't well documented. In fact, after finally completing Sonic Adventure 2, I had intended to record a follow-up video that would have showcased the game's compatibility with Sonic Advance 2's Chow Garden, much like I did with the Surfing Pikachu minigame after completing Pokemon Stadium. Sadly, while recording the footage for the video, my recording came just randomly stopped working mid-recording and then the capture program crashed and corrupted my file. And since I now lost footage that I couldn't easily recreate, I just scrapped the entire Chow Garden Showcase video. And this kind of dampened my mood and made me have to rearrange my upload schedule. Otherwise, I would have continued a steady flow of videos where I finally completed a game and then uploaded a separate video just detailing the unlockables and hidden features. But alas, that didn't really come to be. But that's okay because 2022 kept me plenty occupied. So having my plan shifted due to a lost video wasn't all too damaging or soul crushing, it just meant that my finally completing sub-series was getting sidelined. This sub-series was so sidelined that I didn't even bother tackling another game to completion for the rest of 2022. I just focused on all my other projects instead. But once 2023 rolled around, I was able to add another video to this sub-series, and that was the previously mentioned Mario Tennis Game Boy video. I figured, this is a game that had both a Game Boy version and a Nintendo 64 version, and the two versions could interact with one another and unlock features within each other's games. I picked this game or this set of games because they were similar to Pokemon Stadium. I figured that if I was gonna pick up a project like this again and take on this huge undertaking, then I should remember my ulterior motives for recording these specific games in the first place. Much like Pokemon Stadium, the Mario Tennis games utilized the Nintendo 64 transfer pack to unlock features between the two games. And also like Pokemon Stadium, these features aren't all too well archived or documented. So Mario Tennis seemed like a natural fit as a return to form game. However, once again, this proved to be a bigger undertaking than I had anticipated. And so, I only wound up completing the Game Boy version in 2023. In fact, in 2023, this was the only finally completing video that I released. I'm still working on the Nintendo 64 version, and I hope to release that video later this year. I'll touch on that topic again in a bit, but I brought all this up primarily because this is one of my main goals for 2024, to finally finish and commit to projects that I started in previous years. So, besides finally completing games, what else did I do in 2023 that I want to pursue in 2024. Well, I'd say that 2023 was a great year for collaborative projects. I kicked off the year with a four-player co-op walkthrough of The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, and I think that this series was both visually appealing and audibly entertaining. It was something different from my channel. I mean, ultimately, it was still a gameplay video, but the format of the game lent itself to be something that was unique. I was still able to document a game that otherwise wasn't well documented, I was able to put my editing skills to the test, and I was able to record a fun collaborative project with my friends. While I wouldn't call it the most successful series, on my channel, it was something that I don't regret recording, editing, and uploading. Beyond that, I set off to record a few cooperative gameplay videos of Pokemon Scarlet, and I ensured that I recorded an abundance of friend-involved videos of Splatoon 3 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This was a goal that I wanted to accomplish in 2023. In 2023, I wanted to record more videos with friends. After I realized that the majority of my Splatoon 2 videos were solo-focused, I realized that I wanted to savor the opportunity to record stuff with friends while my friends were still playing the same games as me. Fortunately, 2023 definitely 
definitely delivered on that friend front. I didn't have many issues getting friends for whatever Wednesday videos or for multiplayer matches in games like Pokemon or Splatoon, and I'm very grateful for that. And beyond all this friendliness, I also tried to be experimentative and ambitious with videos where I could. I recorded an eight hour video of Desert Bus. I created a video in which I finally showcased the Jirachi from Pokemon Coliseum's bonus disc, and I ensured that my channel had variety. Between 2022 and 2023, I played dozens of different games for my channel, and at least in 2023, I engaged in these games with many of my friends. Now, admittedly, my upload schedule in 2023 started to become far less consistent than it was in 2022. The year started off okay, as I was regularly posting my Zelda Four Swords videos, and whatever Wednesday videos started coming out at a reasonable pace. I wrapped up the co-op walkthrough, and then my whatever Wednesday videos started to take too long to make and started coming out on Thursdays, or even Fridays at times. Sometimes my videos were just too ambitious and I needed another day or two to get them out. That's the cost of trying to do it all, I guess. While there certainly was never a shortage of videos throughout 2023, the hundreds of videos that I posted toward 2023 were pretty much end heavy. Most of my uploads came out toward the end of the year, namely during the last three months. This was due to a few reasons. First of all, I knew that 2023's biggest release for a fair share of gamers was going to be for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So I made sure that the co-op walkthrough for Four Swords that I recorded with my friends would be completed before Tears of the Kingdom would come out. But once that walkthrough finished and Tears of the Kingdom actually released, I was just focused on Tears of the Kingdom and not much else. Since I had already recorded Breath of the Wild to 100% completion and Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity and its DLC to 100% completion, I figured that it should stand to reason that I also record the entire trilogy and I record Tears of the Kingdom to 100% completion as well. And I knew that this would be an ambitious and time-consuming endeavor, and therefore I wanted all of my focus to be on this game. I wanted to not repeat the same mistake that I made when I covered Breath of the Wild for my channel, where it took me over two years to cover everything in the game. And then it also took me over a year to cover everything in Age of Calamity as well. Granted, these games took so long to complete because I was often working on several other projects while each of these series were ongoing, and that resulted in my coverage for these games often getting sidelined in favor of other games that would become more relevant. When I was playing Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Splatoon 2 had released, so I put a lot of focus onto those games, and when I was playing Age of Calamity, I was still playing Animal Crossing New Horizons for my channel, and New Pokemon Snap came out not too long afterward. And those previous scenarios were not too unlike the scenario that I was about to have with the upcoming release of Tears of the Kingdom. I'm still covering a Splatoon game, as Splatoon 3 had been released, and I'm still covering Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, as the game now has DLC. And I'm still balancing other ongoing projects. So, in an effort to prevent history from repeating itself again, I just tried to bulk upload Tears of the Kingdom content as quickly as I could, because I knew, I just knew, that I was going to get sidelined at some point. And so I primarily focused on Tears of the Kingdom during its launch, but I was still regularly uploading videos of all my other series. The DLC for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the timed events in Splatoon 3, the Whatever Wednesday videos, completing Mario Tennis. I really was just trying to do it all. And so, this all resulted in my videos just kind of getting uploaded whenever. Then, during those last few months of 2023, there are multiple days where I just upload three videos in one day. For example, in October, I was uploading Tears of the Kingdom, a co-op walkthrough for Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, and the first batch of DLC for Pokemon Scarlet. I could have just focused on Tears of the Kingdom, but then by the time I covered the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet, it wouldn't have been relevant. I could have recorded Kirby and the Amazing Mirror at a different time, but then that also wouldn't have been relevant, and also, who knows what other games would come out down the line that would steal its relevancy instead. And since so many things had maintained some sense of relevancy all at the same time, I just posted videos of all these games all at the same time. And there was never much downtime either. As soon as I finished my co-op walkthrough for Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, Sonic Superstars had just come out, and I wanted to do a co-op walkthrough of that. And I was still trying to record Mario Kart and Splatoon. And I still had whatever Wednesday videos in the mix. And I was still trying to complete games from my childhood, namely Mario Tennis 64 at this point. And so, even though I had several videos get uploaded, oftentimes on the same day, the component that suffered the most was my upload schedule. Despite my best efforts to maintain some sense of consistency and not fall behind on my various video projects, I ultimately wound up in a situation worse than I had feared. No matter what I did to try and prevent this outcome, my desire to try and do it all left me in a worse state than I had anticipated. Though I was able to efficiently complete certain game series and walkthroughs by just uploading several videos in one day, this all didn't change the fact that one or two series wound up getting sidelined and that I would wind up falling behind in some other creative areas. What I was able to achieve in completing and showcasing Sonic Superstars or Kirby and the Amazing Mirror or Pokemon Scarlet's DLC, I did so at the cost of muddying up the uploads on my channel and falling
falling further behind in other games like Tears of the Kingdom and some other multiplayer videos. Oh, and that's not even getting into how I traveled to a few different events throughout 2023 and had to adjust or flat out ignore my upload schedule during those times. And I was still editing for other clients while uploading all of these other videos to my own channel. And so I began thinking, how crucial was that component to me? How important is my upload schedule? How important is it for me to stick to this schedule? What is the purpose of this schedule at this point, and will it benefit me in the future? Well, my upload schedule was meant for me to have an organized way for me to keep track of all my videos and projects, but it was never really meant to be a set of rules. It was always more of a guideline. I could have abided to my upload schedule to a T, and I could have just stuck to one upload per day. Doing so certainly would have allowed me to stock up on videos, but then I feared that my videos would never have any relevancy ever again, and I would still be uploading Kirby or Sonic videos or whatever other projects I wanted to work on several days, months, weeks, even years, after they were originally started. If I didn't start posting Kirby and the Amazing Mirror videos until after I had recorded, edited, and uploaded the entirety of Tears of the Kingdom, those Kirby videos may not have released until a year or two after the game came out on the Nintendo Switch Online service. And I wanted to make the Kirby videos, so I'm gonna record, edit, and upload them at some point anyway, but it just made sense to upload them while they were relevant. Sure, just posting exclusively Tears of the Kingdom content may occupy me for a year or two, and then I'd have consistent uploads for a year or two, but then that's all I'd be doing doing, Tears of the Kingdom. And then by the time I'd upload a game like Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, its relevancy would be completely gone. Who cares at that point? This is a two-year-old video. There's all sorts of new games coming out that people are gonna have their eyes on instead. Same thing with Sonic Superstars. Same thing with the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And who's gonna wanna watch a Splatoon 3 Splatfest event several months after it even happened? By that point, the next Splatfest will have already started. I didn't want the entirety of my 2024 to just be late uploads from things that I recorded in 2023. So after weighing my options, it seemed better to just catch up by just bulk uploading my videos as they were ready, regardless of my upload schedule. And that wasn't entirely a good thing. This all definitely caused a decline in my channel viewership. Nobody's gonna sit down and watch all of these videos in one day, especially when some of these videos are over hours long. And so YouTube would stop recommending them. At this point, my viewership had already diminished so much over the years due to my inconsistent uploads that I figured that I may as well just try to make uploads in the future easier for myself instead. Basically, I was working harder now so that I may ideally work more easily later. I was cutting my losses. I figured viewership was going to go down anyway. I may as well make my own life easier. But things never truly got easier. I just kept working on project after project, and I just kept trying to do it all. And that's just what I kept doing throughout 2023, because I thought that by trying to do it all, I'd be able to accomplish everything that I wanted and that all of my projects would just be done. Despite following this mindset, I was still unable to accomplish a few things in 2023. While I was able to upload the entirety of my Kirby and the Amazing Mirror and Sonic Superstars co-op walkthroughs, there were several other games that I never got to record that I had an interest in. There was a part of me that wanted to create content for Pikmin 4 and Super Mario Bros. Wonder, but the timing just didn't work out. I had also hoped that I could potentially finish Tears of the Kingdom before the end of the year, and that definitely didn't happen. Again, maybe if I just focused on Tears of the Kingdom and nothing else, maybe, maybe I could have recorded, edited, and uploaded the entirety of the game before the end of the year, but I didn't just want to be a Tears of the Kingdom channel. I had too many other things I wanted to do, so I went and did them. Oh, and the big one, the big one, between 2022 and 2023, I never really got to launch the next iteration of my Pokemon Bata series. I went pretty ham on the Sword and Shield iteration of this series, and it even became one of the longest series on my channel. I wanted to roll right into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and launch my competitive battle videos as soon as I was finished with my walkthrough. But instead, I basically just soft launched the series with a couple of quick battle videos, and there's been a part of me that now feels as though I missed the chance to have this series become a fun and successful project for my channel. I guess we'll see what happens at this point. But anyway, failing to properly launch this series was perhaps my biggest blunder for the past two years. I was busy working on so many other projects that this one project that I definitely wanted to do just never happened. Otherwise, that about brings us all up to speed. I'm currently working on completing Tears of the Kingdom, I'm regularly recording Splatoon and Mario Kart multiplayer videos, and I'm constantly trying to get my other projects off the ground, such as a proper launch for my Pokemon Bata series or the next video in my finally completing sub-series. And so, now that we're all caught up, let's move into the present.
Okay, well, I'm not entirely done talking about the past, but I think it would be best if I moved into the next section of this video. As it currently stands, I'm still making videos whenever I can, and I'm still trying to wrap up any lingering projects from 2022 and 2023. So I'll eventually finish Tears of the Kingdom, and I'll keep recording multiplayer matches in Splatoon and Mario Kart for my weekend uploads. However, I don't intend for 2024 to be a repeat of 2023, or just another continuation of 2022, because that's kind of what 2023 was, right? While I started all sorts of new ambitions projects, it was more or less just a continuation of 2022. At the time, I was fine with that, but now that I'm going into 2024, I don't want to have that be the case. While things this year so far may start out and appear as more of the same from previous years, the truth of the matter is they can't be the same. Therefore, they won't be the same. Does that make sense? Here, let me explain. The truth of the matter is, toward the tail end of 2023, I've undergone significant lifestyle changes in the background. So, no matter what, things will be forever different now, and I intend to pivot accordingly. The main lifestyle change that occurred for me recently was that in November of 2023, I moved from California to Washington. More specifically, I packed my belongings and I drove from Los Angeles to Seattle with the intention of pursuing a happier and healthier life. I needed something new, and I just wasn't happy in Los Angeles anymore. And rather than sit around and wait for an opportunity to come to me, I tried to pursue my happiness by changing my environment and surroundings with the hope that I'll be able to find new opportunities during my pursuits instead. I now live in a studio apartment by myself, and that brings its own pros and cons, and I now face new challenges every day, and I now work a job to pay my rent. But I still like making videos, and I want to keep creating videos. In fact, I got a job so I don't feel burnout. And fortunately, I don't feel burnt out. I'm just trying to take the necessary precautions to be able to live my life, balance everything, and not reach that point. The important thing is that I want to like creating videos. I want to keep doing it and I want to like to keep doing it. As such, I don't have a Patreon account and I don't sell merchandise. I have nothing against the folks that do these things, I just don't want to be living that type of lifestyle. That is to say, it was never my intention to become a full-time content creator. It's a nice thought and the extra income is always nice, but I knew that I wasn't going to be on YouTube forever. My channel was always meant to serve as a creative outlet and as a potential portfolio for future opportunities opportunities. So while it's nice to get paid for making silly, simple gameplay videos with my friends, I don't currently make enough money from YouTube alone to be able to sustain myself. And of course, the big part in sustainability these days is ensuring that you're playing YouTube's game. You want to be relevant? Then you have to play the latest games and constantly create what many may deem to be an evergreen type of video. And so YouTube essentially punishes creators for experimenting and having variety on their channels. And I mean, while I don't like that this is how YouTube is, I do kind of get it. YouTube only functions if people are watching videos, and therefore their algorithms will always prioritize bigger videos from bigger creators, since that's what most people are watching anyway, right? And I mean, this is nothing new for YouTube. It makes logical sense. You should make videos that people would want to watch. But as for me, I've always just kind of done my own thing, and I want things to remain that way. Like, here's where my head's at. I never appreciated the idea of just not creating content on certain games because the views will be low. So, like, what, you're just never gonna create certain videos because the viewership isn't there? Nah. Low views or high views, I'm gonna create the content that I want to create. And if people want to watch it, then that's even better. I don't want to be unable to create a video just because people might not watch it. If I wanna make a video, then I'm making it. Sure, I probably could have reached three times my subscriber size and could have maintained more consistent viewership across my uploads if I just did what YouTube wanted me to do, but then I'd fear that I wouldn't really be enjoying myself. I could have absolutely gone down the route of opening up a Patreon and selling merchandise and opening up all sorts of additional revenue streams, but it's just not what I wanted. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with making YouTube videos just for money, but after all these years of being a content creator, the main reason I want to make videos is because I like doing it, not because I'm trying to make a paycheck. If I went down that route and I just played YouTube's game, I'd just be doing what I'm told to do rather than what I want to do. And I never want content creation to feel like homework or a chore. As it stands, I have no obligation to create videos. I choose to make videos. To make additional income, I edited for other content creators instead. This way, I could effectively get my name out there and expand my editing portfolio. And I was very fortunate to be able to work with so many talented and generous creators. But even then, it wasn't my intention to forever be editing for other creators either. Sure, I enjoy it, but I want to keep going. I want to keep growing 
growing, and I want to keep pursuing new opportunities. And the issue with editing for other creators is that I shouldn't rely on them forever. Editing for them is a privilege. That means that, at any time, they could change their life direction, and then I'd suddenly be out of work. And so, for these reasons, I thought it best to start considering and exploring other routes for my life. Ultimately, it seemed as though moving to a new location would lead to the best outcome, and I chose Seattle as my destination. So what does that entail for you viewers? Well, now that I'm working a job almost every day, the schedule fluctuates, that means that I can't create videos as frequently as I used to. I'm no longer sitting at home alternating between editing for clients and editing for myself. I'm now going outside, making money from a job, and then coming home and using the free time that I have left to work on videos. But hey, I still have no interest in just settling for a normal life either. I am far too creative and chaotic for that. So my channel will still serve as a creative outlet for me. However, my previous upload schedule is no longer sustainable. Heck, it became difficult to sustain even when I wasn't working elsewhere for 40 hours a week. But I'm not unused to this either. Back when I was trying to abide by my upload schedule, there were times where I was still trying to upload daily videos while I still had a full-time job or while I was in school. So I know that I can handle it all. Actually, in a weird way, something I've learned about myself over the years is that overloading myself with all this work will help me to better optimize my time and get more work done. In this case, I'm working a job and paying rent and I'm still trying trying to get all these other ambitious projects done, I just don't have a daily upload schedule anymore. I will no longer strive for that. In this case, I'm sort of overloading myself again, but in a more healthy format. Here's my thinking. The primary reason for a change to my upload schedule is so that I may better focus on my personal life, my health, and my dreams. And I don't feel as though I can successfully do that without modifying my channel in some way. That is to say, I don't feel as though I can focus on these things with my current lifestyle while trying to strive for daily uploads. But I still want to create videos simply because I enjoy creating them. So it appears as though I can do so if I remove my strive for daily uploads. See, by not having a daily upload schedule anymore, I don't have to worry about getting a video ready for the day. I don't have to worry about going home and making sure tomorrow's video is ready. And I just have haven't been able to do that anyway. Now I can just go home and focus on what I need to and get a video out just when it's ready. The truth is, I just can't do daily videos anymore. My videos have become too long and too ambitious. And since my own personal lifestyle has changed, then it should stand to reason that perhaps my online YouTube lifestyle should change too. And hey, with the removal of a daily upload schedule, sometimes there may be more frequent uploads. If I can get more work done in a day because I'm not abiding to my daily upload schedule, then great! Although don't get too hopeful. I'm basically just removing the weight that a daily upload schedule brings. However, I have plans to make it so that things don't spin into complete chaos either. The upload schedule was there to create organization and have some sense of expectation for my viewers. With my schedule in place, you would know that a Mario Kart or a Splatoon video would come out on the weekends. And I still want you to know that you can still I still expect things like that, so I still plan to have some sense of order. I will no longer strive for daily uploads, and my general schedule will remain more as a guideline rather than as a hard rule. Videos will be recorded, edited, and uploaded as I find available time, but I will still strive for a somewhat consistent upload schedule until I complete Tears of the Kingdom. So everything I've been creating so far will still continue, just I'll be busier and uploads will be less frequent, they'll be less of a daily thing. But I'm determined to make it all work, heck I even wrote the script for this video in a pocket notebook while I was at work so that I may best optimize my time. But rest assured, I'll be okay. Video editing will just have to be more of a side hustle for me now, but it's still my passion. I'll at least finish what I started and hopefully I can continue to strive for bigger video projects too. And what about events? Well, as for future events, I'll still attend them. In fact, I even started to wear a blue Yoshi hat now. I call it my new blue debut. But yeah, whether I go green or go blue, I'll still attend plenty of events. I just don't know which events those will be just yet. But looking at my channel as a whole and looking at where I am in my life, I am at a bit of a point of acceptance with regards to my YouTube channel. Again, I want to create videos because I want to, not because I have to. So I accept that doing so means that my viewership will diminish due to my inconsistency. And I accept the fact that I simply cannot supply enough sufficient quality videos while also working a job. I'll keep striving for bigger things, but if this is how my life and my channel have to be for the next year or two or three, then I know I'll at least be okay. I chose everything up to this point. I'm responsible for my channel and my actions, and it's okay if I'm not more popular. I've always just kind of done my own thing, and I've always just kind of hoped for the best. And the best part about that is being able to look back and see how much I've grown and how far I've come. At least now I can rest a little more easily knowing that I'm not tired of my passion.
Now, there is something else that I've been doing recently. Lately, I've been recording an abundance of gameplay footage. Sometimes I just want to come home and play a game and not have to work on a video. So I record everything I play. Anytime I play a game, I try to record my footage for future use. I even try to mix up the variety of my footage where I can, such as sometimes playing as other characters while I play Super Mario Bros. Wonder or recording co-op gameplay in a game that provides it. So now I have gigabytes, no, terabytes of miscellaneous gameplay footage. This is all basically the result of me recording footage for the video videos that I edit for other clients in the past, my urge to record features and modes of games that are seldom ever documented. And now I just record everything because you never know when something may be inaccessible in the future. And as such, I now just have a surplus of footage on a hard drive on standby. Of course, while it is easier for me to just play games for my own leisure, I often don't have time to play games that aren't for my own future videos. That is to say, if I'm not playing Pikmin 4 for my channel, then Pikmin 4 isn't going to be the main game that I play when I get home. It's gonna be Tears of the Kingdom or Splatoon 3. So this is something that I also plan to resolve in the future, but for the time being, I'd say that it's safe to assume that Zelda, Splatoon, and Pokemon will be occupying my life for the next few months. But once I finally complete Tears of the Kingdom, I truly believe that my schedule, both in terms of my uploads and my personal life, will open up a bit. Then I figure my Splatoon videos will probably go for another year or two, and hopefully I can finally launch my Pokemon Bata series and finally release another finally completing video in the mix, namely Mario 2064. I'll still upload plenty of multiplayer videos, and there'll still be a fair share of whatever Wednesday videos here and there, just no strict upload schedule. There is no guarantee that there will be a Tears of the Kingdom video going out tomorrow, but if there is going to be a Tears of the Kingdom video, it's going to go out on a weekday. There's no guarantee that a Splatoon video is going to go out tomorrow, but ideally, if there is one, it'll go out on a weekend. And ideally, I'll have something close to a daily upload schedule, and I'll still have some fairly consistent uploads, just nothing's guaranteed. And I'll still attempt to expand my channel as my portfolio as well, and I have a few plans on how I'm preparing to do that. So, for the first few months of 2024, perhaps even for the first half of the year, everything shall be devoted to continuing and concluding my project from 2023 and earlier. But what's after that? What do I intend to do once those projects are finally wrapped up? Now it's finally time to answer the question that was asked in this video's title. What's next? All right. Let's get this big statement out of the way. 2024 will be the last year in which my primary form of content will be walkthroughs. The last walkthrough that I intend to record for my channel shall be for the remake of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which launches later this year. I want to record this game for my channel as this game holds significance to me. It is the game from which my username originates. I have a whole separate video that explains the story, and that video marks the reveal of my blue Yoshi hat, so it feels fitting for this game to serve as the final walkthrough for my channel. Lately, walkthroughs have generally served as more of filler content while I attempt to create more passion-based projects. I was so dead set on trying to do a daily upload schedule that walkthrough videos just fit the daily uploads best. The videos are easy to create and easy to digest. Walkthroughs allowed me to easily fulfill my daily video quota, but now that I'm hardly abiding by a daily upload schedule anymore, and now that my life is primarily occupied with a job that I already work 40 hours a week, there just isn't too much of an incentive to have walkthroughs be my main focus anymore. So instead, I intend to pivot my channel's main content. I'll still upload multiplayer matches and games such as Splatoon, Mario Kart, and whenever the series properly launches, Pokemon Bata, and those will still generally come out as weekend uploads as frequently and consistently as possible. But otherwise, I plan to put my effort into the finally completing series. This way, I can continue to, well, complete games, and I can more easily work on these videos and release them when they're ready. And working on these types of videos better works around my current life schedule too. So I'm basically moving on from daily walkthrough parts to what will hopefully be monthly long play videos, so to speak. And by doing this, I can actually fulfill my ambitions of creating more ambitious videos. Rather than just doing a simple walkthrough video for a game that may lose relevancy in the future, I can properly complete a game that can hold relevancy whenever it becomes relevant again. I can continue to document and record features of games that aren't well documented, and I can go home each day and record bits of one game at my own pace, rather than trying to condense everything into one walkthrough part to meet a daily quota. Another way to look at it all is, now the multiplayer videos are serving as my filler content, while I work on more edited, long-form content in the background. Splatoon and Mario Kart videos will be the main things, while I work on these other ambitious projects in the back. And this way, I can better put the spotlight onto niche features of niche games. And there's an overall satisfaction of me doing this 
as well. Creating these videos more regularly will allow me to feel a sense of accomplishment, and I'm hoping that my viewers will feel excited to see me upload these videos since my previous videos performed decently well. So, by pursuing the finally completing series, this will give me some sort of goal to fulfill as I work on videos each day when I return home from work. It'll resolve the absence of my daily upload schedule, yet will allow my fans to have something to look forward to each week or each month. It'll sometimes allow me to continue capturing footage of undocumented features of games, and, with any luck, it'll ultimately allow me to simultaneously experiment and maintain a sense of consistency as I enter a new generation of content for my channel. I figure my videos are currently already hours long anyway, so why not just go all in and make a super long video and get some greater sense of accomplishment each time. One of the other main issues with my channel has been the fact that I do variety content, which YouTube doesn't like. YouTube would rather have it so that I just focus on Splatoon or just focus on Pokemon. And as I mentioned earlier, I could just do walkthroughs and I could just focus on Tears of the Kingdom. But I already have so much interest in so many other games and projects and I have so many things that I want to do that I've started to once again just do my own thing. And of course, that stunted my channel's growth, and I kinda already went into all of that in this video. However, if my channel's primary focus is on the finally completing series, this also allows me to somewhat work around YouTube's preferences. This way, I can still play a variety of different games while also honing my skills into a specific type of video. This will allow my channel to have a bit more of an identity in the future. And by just having one big video at a time every few weeks or every few months, this will help ease up some of the clutter on my channel too. So going forward, Rather than just being a walkthrough or a let's player, I'll be a guy that's known for uploading long plays and for occasionally playing Pokemon Splatoon and Mario Kart on the weekends from time to time. So I can still make videos with my friends and I can still focus on my own thing. This is all basically meant to be a solution to help my channel grow by finding a specific topic that I enjoy while not entirely giving up the other content that I enjoy creating. I can still play the games that I like, I can still create videos with my friends, I can still record these timed events, and I can still go home and work on a big ambitious project, all the same. And in finally completing these games, I'll be recording a ton of gameplay footage in the future as I attempt to complete them. And that's not even counting all the games that I intend to record and play just for my own leisure, like I mentioned earlier. So what exactly do I plan to do with all of this captured footage? Fortunately, I think I have an idea that'll resolve some other issues as well. It's a resolution that will simultaneously make use of all the footage that I've been recording for my own personal time, and it will allow me to fulfill another purpose in working on the finally completing series. Well, the next phase of my pivot to long form, long play content would be an initiative that I like to call the green and blue initiative. Basically, I'm gonna split my channel and content into a green channel and a blue channel. It's supposed to go along with the fact that I now wear both a green Yoshi hat and a blue Yoshi hat. This current channel, as in the one that you are currently watching right now at this very second, will be referred to as the green channel. I mean, it'll still just be called Yo Schiller, but it will focus on gameplay videos. So once my walkthroughs wrap up, which would be Tears of the Kingdom and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, and maybe I'll slide in one more quick co-op walkthrough in there, we'll see. But point is, once Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door wraps up, this green channel will primarily consist of my finally completing videos and my other online multiplayer videos. To better explain this green and blue initiative, let me put it to you this way. Think of it as green for gameplay. Think of my channel like a television station that airs my equivalent of the Game Center CX series, and that this channel will occasionally put the spotlight on uncommon features and modes from games. And the weekends will still contain the same Splatoon and Pokemon competitive videos that you all love. And all the gameplay that would be captured while making each of these videos would still be archived and used elsewhere. I'll finish up my Tears of the Kingdom walkthrough, then I may do one other quick co-op walkthrough, then I'll have Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door be the last walkthrough that I ever record for this channel. Once that walkthrough concludes, the green part of the green and blue initiative will go into effect. The gameplay and recordings would go on to be used in other videos. And what would those other videos be? Well, that's where the blue channel comes into fruition. Yo Schiller Blue will be a new channel in which I shall focus on creating editorials, topical videos, and basically anything that's not just a gameplay video. So, you know, if you like the style of formatting that this video is, this type of content will soon be on the blue channel. This is the channel where videos that may feel out of place on the green channel will go. 
Think of the Blue Channel as being a combination of Arlo's editorials, Scott Stash stories and ramblings, and Masahiro Sakurai's industry explanation showcases. This channel will serve as another creative outlet for me to create things that aren't just gameplay, long play type content. To be fair, many viewers have suggested that I do something like this for many, many years. However, I was hesitant to run multiple channels because I liked the idea of having a single channel be my all-in-one portfolio. And my upload schedule at the time played around constantly creating content that my viewers would look forward to. But now that my circumstances have changed, I feel as though the timing is now most appropriate to pivot and approach content creation from a different angle. Splitting my interests across a green channel and a blue channel will allow me to resolve many of my current issues and struggles with video production. It was becoming inevitable that I would have to stray away from my traditional upload schedule, and pivoting to the focus of my finally completing series instead would allow me to create content without being confined to a schedule. And then the blue channel will allow me to better utilize all of the gameplay that I capture and allow me to post content at my leisure that otherwise wouldn't have fit with my channel previously. Now I can talk about topical things. Now I can have an excuse to create more editorials. Now I can actually use all the gameplay I record for something else even when I'm not editing for a client. And most importantly, by doing things this way, I'll be able to create content just because I like creating content. Each channel would post videos as they're ready. The green channel would have me focus on creating these long play videos, which would take a long time. And then the footage could be potentially repurposed and reused for the blue channel. But if there's a topical piece of news or a story that I want to share on the blue channel, then I can just do that. And this way, you folks can decide which style of content you want to watch. Do you want to watch me finally complete a game and spend 20 hours doing so? Do you want to sit down and watch me struggle to complete Pokemon Stadium for 20 hours? Or do you want to watch a video that explains the impact that Pokemon Stadium had on my life? Or maybe you want to watch both. The whole point of this blue and green initiative is for me to create content in a way that allows me to resolve all of the other problems that I have going on. And I feel as though this will allow me to better optimize my time, and I'll no longer have to fret about posting daily uploads or recording gameplay videos as a separate task anymore. I'll ideally be able to live a happier and healthier lifestyle, which is something that I wanted by moving to Seattle anyway. And I'll balance a 40 hour work week on top of it all. I'll keep recording gameplay footage, I'll keep collaborating with others, and I'll keep creating videos regularly. And I can only hope that you'll all support me on my future endeavors. No Patreon, no merchandise, just me making videos because I want to. When I look back at 2022 and 2023, I remain grateful that I was able to do and accomplish so much. But sadly, the writing was on the wall that things couldn't stay that way. I was looking for a lifestyle change and I took off to live in Seattle. And yeah, my life definitely changed. And so if my own life is going to change, then so too should my video production schedule. I want to maintain my ambitions, but I also want to pursue bigger goals. Let's hope that 2024 is a better year than 2023, 2022, and all the years prior. I hope that I can explore new opportunities and I hope that I can continue to entertain you all through my passion for content creation. I hope that you all enjoy this green and blue initiative and I hope that this resolves a lot of the issues that I had throughout the previous years. I'm trying something new and I'm going into 2024 with a bit more of a plan. Here's hoping for the best and here's hoping for a better year and 2024. Thank you all for your support over the years and thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all in future videos, whether they be on the green channel or the blue channel. But for now, let's finish up my previous projects. Bye-bye, humans. Whoosh.